Alright, so we have a do-it-yourself introduction video. I'm just sinking some screws in my door for my version of a, of a tough shed. Home Depot has their version. I have my version. Uh, we try to do everything ourselves instead of relying on people from Home Depot or other places building our stuff for us or building companies. We do a lot of things, dabble in automotive, dabble in vehicles, uh, lawn equipment, and a little bit into construction. Uh, believe it or not, this is one of, a, one of the barn doors that we have for our little shed. And right now we're just screwing some screws into our our door. This is one of our doors. We have two, two barn doors that are going to open. And uh, this is uh, probably about 5 eighths plywood. We decided to build it 8 by, well, 8 and a half by 12 shed. We'll be 8 foot tall. We're, we're going to call it arc version of the tough shed. Instead of the whole thing being built out of OSB, which is this crap right here. Uh, we decided to get creative and stay on the cheap side, but use, you know, go for strength. We want to withstand 150 to 200 mile an hour winds without a problem. And we want it to last, instead of 10 years, we want it to last 40 years. So this is what we've done, and we've done it cheaper that Home Depot would sell you one of their tough shed kits for the same size. Um, if you walk around with me over here real quick, you can cut the video for a second, we'll resume. Okay, so you can see that we've we've built our, our uh, shed, most of it, and uh, we've got the outside tar paper. We decided to use two by six, for all the trim, the door casing and stuff. We've used two by six for the doors. What you're looking at for this door right here is the inside, the one I was screwing down there on the concrete a second ago, making a complete door to this. Now, this is not treated. These two by six are pretty cheap. These are eight foot two by sixes. And uh, you know we cut and cross brace, and we got our five eighths plywood. Uh, the only place that we found that we could we could skim on on money is uh, the OSB, which is our side walls. Now I know you've noticed if you in building construction at all, you'll notice that we use landscaping timbers as studs. For every landscaping timber, it's equivalent to approximately two studs. About three by four, you could say. Yeah, approximately. So, that's like double stud in a wall. Now, these are placed every 16 inches, like a normal center to center, like a normal construction project. Except, we use this $7 a sheet OSB, which is only 7 16 Doesn't look like much now, but when we slap the 7 16 on the inside and insulation in between, now we got something strong. The secret to using landscaping timbers for structure uh, construction like this is pick out the straightest ones out of the pile, try to get it from the same pallet, and construct them and put them up while they're still wet, while they're still treated and damp. That way, when they go to warp and, and dry out and warp, they're not going to warp, they're going to take the, the, uh, the structure, the uh, form of the way that they were put up. So that's how we did this. I mean, we built the structure, literally, literally the, the framing in two days, we, or a day and a half or something like that. We framed this whole thing in and we put it up. We used not one nail in this. These are all screws. Or well, lag bolts. Well, we only have lag bolts at the bottom. You can see they're eight inch lag bolts. For the beams down below, um, 
so like I said the shed is in the inside the outer dimensions are eight and a half wide by four, uh, 12, 12 wide sorry by eight and a half thick um, the roof overhang those are I haven't we're not finished yet with the fascia and the soffit well we are with the fascia but not soffit that's a three foot overhang so we have a serious overhang to keep the water away from our foundation which is great and we have a good pitch on the roof I mean we've got two 30 degree angles coming together to make that pitch um, makes one hell of a roof that's not going to catch any kind of uh, you know standing water at any time tree limbs or anything and it's, everything's going to slide right off that roof and that's what we intended now each one of the corners of these walls are going to be reinforced even though they land double landscape timbered in a corner we're going to come with two by six and go up and frame them in just like we did our frame here some of this wood has been salvaged from pallets 18 wheeler pallets uh cargo pallets and some not um some new. We didn't feel the need to use a lot of treated wood on this except for down here at the bottom. No, it was 4x4. Four four. That was pretty much the only thing treated store bought. Well, yeah, well, those are actually oak. Those are oak from an oak pallet down below. Um, you'll see pictures in, in the video where, where it's coming together. We're going to use tin on the roof and we're going to use a tin ridge, ridge cap on the roof. Now the way we built this building is we don't have to cut any tin because it only takes eight foot sections. And the way we did our landscaping timbers is, is real easy. We use deck boards for our fascia. Uh, and we use plywood for our soffit. Um, or am I saying that in reverse? Whatever, guys. Um, Pretty much plywood as an actual roof itself. Right, and plywood as a, as a roof itself. Five eighths, I would recommend. And then we got a cheap vinyl vent and a cheap vinyl vent for the other side. Just cut an octagon and slap it in. Um, so this will be here 40 years from now, especially when we finish painting it and we keep up with the painting maintenance. Uh, the stuff is treated, the soffit, the fascia, and all that. The landscaper timbers are semi-treated. I mean, they're meant for the ground. Everybody knows that they rot in the ground, but above ground, they do pretty good. Uh, but they're not going to be exposed to the weather. They're going to be completely enclosed. So they should last forever. I mean, you know, for as long as our lifespan. Um, so this shed, all in all, is probably going to be about, when we're finished, a thousand bucks to build this shed this is it's 300 bucks in in timbers or 250 it's 77 it was, timbers it was around 270 bucks we yeah. calculated in timbers yeah. so in in landscape and timbers this is only three uh under 300 bucks it's 77 landscape and timbers we used in here and then everything else we got was the uh, cheap We're, two by six pallets that we ended up salvaging we salvaged pallet boards when pretty we could. much nothing uh we we also used, that was just for the foundation, the OSB was only $7 a sheet. You could tell it only took one sheet, two sheets, and three at the top. It was around 13 for all around, which was ended up being about only 100 bucks. Right, okay. So then it's the most expensive part is the roof on this. The 10 is going to be about 200 bucks. And because this, the roof itself is actually 14 by 8 on each side, so it's 14 this way and eight aside up because all we did was nick 30 and 30 off of the end of the landscape and tempers and put them together we wanted an extra wide overhang because we're going to put a wood rack in the back for the siding we're going to use fence planks fence boards just like this fence is made out of we're going to use fence boards like this we're going to cut them to fit and they're already pre-treated but once we paint them with a very good oil based paint they're not going anywhere they'll be here a long time and uh, we're basically going to have a, a real tough shed I mean this thing should be able to withstand a good amount of wind I mean it's an overkill build but I want it to be here a long time so 
This is one of our do-it-yourselfers project. You know, we got non-treated wood here, but it's going to be painted with oil-based paint. It's got liquid nails in the middle, keeping it together. Plus, it's screwed on the back side. Uh, it's braced. We're going to put we're going to put our our stoppers here. I'm going to run a rail down here to stop our doors and make them close properly. We're going to install a giant hasp. This is probably one of the most expensive locks I've ever bought. It's like 29 bucks. It's going to go like that. It's going to have two plates of steel behind it right here. Nobody's coming in here. Not, not without me hearing them. Um, and this is what we'll store all of our valuable uh, lawn equipment in. Construction equipment. And uh, most of all, it can breathe at the top, so there's no uh, everything gasoline we put in there will be able to vent. Yeah, chainsaws, etc. Now this is what I would call a real tough shed. Um, it doesn't look like that OSB piece of shit that doesn't have any overhang to it or whatever, and it's just painted OSB, and they want like fifteen hundred. Well, they, want, they want like five thousand for it for about the size that we have this shed. I don't know if it's that much or what, but I know that we only spent a fraction on that building this thing, and it's going to last three times as long. Uh, what's the worst that's going to happen? I'm going to change a fence, fence plank every now and then for the siding. I mean... I don't see the internal structure failing. No. I, I mean, can't see that within the 10-year future. No, I mean, you can see how we, we use a screw on everything. It was All we had to use was, was an impact. And everything has been screwed in with four inch screws, inch and five eighths. All the OSB is inch and five eighths, screwed on with inch and five eighths screws. It's just that when you're working with landscape and timber, since they're rounded, you got to try to hit the center of the landscape and timber. You don't want to get off to the side. So there's three sheets of OSB in the rear, equaling 12 feet uh, wide. So and then we got a little bit of attic space up there. We can crawl up in the attic. Now there's some treated two by fours up there that I just use as braces to brace the roof. And then I have it braced. those left over. Yeah, and then I have it braced here with some pallet, pine, and oak, and miscellaneous stuff that we had left over. Uh, cut a 30 degree angle on that, shoved it up to the roof, and screwed it down. There's a brace on every beam. Yeah, not every other, every beam. Right there. Every single beam has a brace. Uh, and it's also, it's been braced three times, there, there, and then the, the cross in between, and then that up top there, that center beam running across the top to make the peak of the roof, the eave. So the roof won't detach, the roof won't pull off, the roof won't cave in. Right. So, long story short, I think we got uh, Home Depot's cheap tough shed beat, and the cheap, I mean, the expensive price that they sell it for. And we haven't even added any cross braces in between these studs yet. Uh, I'm still debating whether we need to with the kind of siding that we're putting on, real wood, and how strong it's going to be. Plus, we're going to put more OSB on the inside and insulation in between. 7 sixteenths OSB right now is 7 something. 7.89 a piece. 7.89 uh, for a 4 by 8 sheet. I mean, you can't beat that. At least in our state. It's just to hold hold something together and hold it down, and that OSB is never going to get any water. It might get a little moisture from time to time, but it should hold up. It can't handle that. It's supposed to. So, uh, I don't know. Leave your comments and tell me what you think. Uh, I mean, like I said, I think when we finish this whole thing, including paint, everything together, it's going to cost us maybe, maybe what, 1500 bucks at the most? Probably. That's about the most. <laughs> and that includes all screws, fasteners, everything. Screws, fasteners, lag bolts, washers. Right. Even cinder blocks included with concrete that we've, we've, we've anchored these blocks in the ground. Back to concrete. Four feet down. So we got four of those, eight of those, sorry, four feet down. The cinder blocks aren't even holding anything right now until we put weight in here. It's all been leveled before we put it in here. That and 2x6 is galore underneath. Yeah, well, the 2x6 is what those beams that we crossed over. A lot of those are oak. This is oak. It's all pallet oak. And this has all been sprayed with Terminex uh, or Taurus SC.
broke a whole pack of Phillips bits sinking screw sinking screws through those. Yeah, uh, so each one of these holes have been filled with termite killer. Uh, it's supposed to last 11 years in the ground. Uh, it's also mixed with the concrete as well. So we shouldn't have any problem with wood to ground contact because we treated each hole. Now I could get fancy and mix up some kerosene and some, you know, some other chemicals that I know of and spray the inside before I put the walls up, but I don't want to do that in case I turn this into a living loft. I mean, or a living, temporary, like living, living quarters for a, for a tiny house for somebody, you know, stick a window unit in or something. So I don't want to spray it with, with, uh, with a treatment like that, but if I did, it would last a lot longer. I mean, I could spray it with kerosene and uh, a mixture of kerosene and linseed oil. I could even add some stain in there for color. Like the fence there. Just for fun. Uh, and make it last a lot longer and keep the bugs off of it. But I don't see that necessary. It's going to get the appropriate paint that it needs. Uh, we're going to use floor and porch paint, which is a polyurethane based paint. It ain't going nowhere. Okay, intro.